finale of arena football the stampede looking to lock up their playoff spot next on espn2 we are here at the keel center for the finale of the regular season in arena ball and we are on stampede alert as florida comes to town in st louis Take a look at the playoff seedings. One through five have been set. Starting with Iowa at the top, then Tampa Bay, Arizona, Albany, and Milwaukee. But after that, it gets interesting. Six through eight up for grabs between Orlando, Anaheim, and St. Louis. And that is why we are here tonight. Hello, everybody, and welcome. I'm Larry Beal, along with Mike Golick. Mike, St. Louis and Florida. We know that St. Louis is in the playoffs. Florida is not. What we don't know is who the Stampede will play in round one of the postseason. However, we do know that how St. Louis plays in this game will determine who they face in round one. That's right, Larry. A win puts them against Arizona, who's seeded third. A loss, they go to the number one seed, Iowa Barnstormers. I don't think they want to do that. Florida, on the other hand, playing for pride in a totally different situation. Could be playing for their job. As Coach Jim Jensen says, they're going to be evaluating these guys, how they deal with the adversity, and see if they may have a job next year. Now, if you've watched Arena Ball, you know they love to throw, but the Stampede, as their name suggests, love to run, and they've got just the man for it in big Bernard Hall. Bernard, Nobody told Bernard Hall that uh, this was a passing league. 29 rushing touchdowns. Each one he gets tonight will continue his record. Also, 49 yards short of an arena record of most rushing yardage in one season. And this league has been in there 10 years. It's a great record. Now the Bobcats come in ravaged by injuries, but fortunately one man is healthy. That is Cleveland Pratt, little guy who is lightning in a bottle, and Florida needs the little man to be big tonight. Well, you don't want to miss this guy. Over 1,000 yards receiving this year. He's got 17 touchdowns, one of only seven players in arena football history to have 1,000 yards receiving and 1,000 yards in return yardage. Keep an eye out for him. If you blink, you're going to miss him. We are set for the opening kickoff between St. Louis and Florida. And there is Pratt, number two. But he is number one when it comes to returning the football in this league. There's nobody quite like him. He is just incredible to try to pin down. Tom Whalehan will boot it away for the Stampede of St. Louis as they look to try to finish up the regular season with a three-game winning streak. And we are underway. This is Pratt, seven yards deep. And he is triple-teamed and dropped Darrell Hammond on him at the seven-yard line. Something you want to look for early. First and ten from the seven. Gidry will throw quickly. Hamilton in motion. Gidry has good protection, and that ball almost intercepted by Ricks. Pratt in motion. Gidry stumbles as he takes the snap. Now deep up the field, and incomplete as he overthrows Millard Hamilton. Now to his end zone, so this will be a 59-yard attempt, and it is short. Fielder there. Dropped at the 14-yard line. Bounds out of Maryland. Leads the league in passing attempts and completions. Triple wide receiver to the left, and they'll run Hall on first down. Pickup of about three for Bernard Hall. Bernard Hall again, eluding a tackle, and gets smashed into the wall on the far side and for the stampede. Throwing short and incomplete line so this will be a 45 yard attempt and it is wide to the left a touchback for Gidry and the Bobcats it's a little pitch to Pearson around left end field second down and seven Gidry fires and incomplete did not have control of the ball and he took a third down and seven for Gidry and the Bobcats Complete to Wells at the 18-yard line. Breaks two tackles and drops at the 21. Three yards in a cloud of dust. They Absolutely. like to run the ball. Here's Gidry with a play fake. And he's got Marty 
Folkert's wide open down the sidelines, bumped out of bounds. That's your old buddy from Miami taking it down to the 13-yard line. This is some injury missed a game, but obviously back and healthy now. A little screen pass, same man, Folkert's. As he takes it down to the seven-yard line, Terrence Barber on the stop, and Barber, one look at Marty Hokertz, and he decides, let's go for the ankles. Cut, cut. Second down, the give to Jones. The ball came loose, but he was already down. Third and one. Flags down. Complete on the sidelines to Wells, but Numbers goes to the wide side to the right. Pitch to Jones, and he fumbles the ball. It was off the wall and out of bounds, but then Harum's back in, recovered by Florida. That's one of the unique things about arena football. That was a live ball off the wall and recovered by Florida. As long as you recover it and you're in bounds, you can take it off the wall or when it's going to the wall. The wall and the net are both live in arena football. Back in St. Louis, no score as Florida was denied on what seems to be a questionable call here. You have to have one, it can go off the wall, but you have to have one foot in. You'll see right there, you see his foot is out of bounds, and he's gonna grab the ball. Now he's got the ball, but that foot's out of bounds. They got a gift right there. Bernard Hall clearly had his foot out of bounds, although from the referee's perspective, it's impossible to see that because he had a player in Papasadero who was blocking his view on first down. It's a pass, and it is complete to Michael Baker, the offensive specialist. Out from the St. Louis 16, short drop. Kaleo complete to Baker. Stutter stepping down to the 20 and the 16-yard line before he's triple team, dragged down, and does his dance. Well, you see what they're doing with Baker. Is they have confidence that he... Here's the give on a handoff, and it wasn't Bernard Hall, which is shocking for the stampede through the hands of Kerry Hayes as he was running at the 10 yard line and running free. Yeah, Dante's gonna have a short life expectancy if he keeps getting hit around the midsection. Kaleo touch pass to the end zone off the hands of Terrence Barber and I hope he comes back. All right, Terry, he's okay. We're flying <laughs> over the wall there. Baker at the bottom of your screen in motion. All day to throw, but incomplete. Intended first and ten from the 14-yard line for the Bobcats. Time to throw downfield and deep for Pratt. Touchdown. Cleveland Pratt. That's what you call a great pitch and catch. And Mark Ricks, the defensive specialist, he will be on Pratt all day. They, he was told you have Pratt wherever he goes. If he runs into the stands, you got to follow him. Here, he didn't follow him too well. Well, easier said than done. Absolutely. For the little man who runs a 4-3-40. Little stop and go. He froze Hicks there just for enough time, and boy, he got two, three steps ahead of him. Nice pass right on the money. Dropped it right in. And now the extra point by Vitatech. It is good, so we are on the board. We said, where's the offense? Well, here it is, Cleveland Pratt responding with the deep ball and nice touch by Gidry. Gonna come right into your living room with this one. Gets him by two steps, lays him right on the dime. Florida's up, seven zip. Gidrator, you're gonna miss some action. Here's the kick by Vitatech. Off the screen, fielded nicely by Baker. Up the middle with running room and look out. The 25 and he is gone. A little strut into the end zone as we've got back-to-back -back touchdowns. And here comes the offense. We were calling for it, and Michael Baker responding. I've always been impressed at how they're able to dance going into the end zone. I always figured I'd be way too tired by the time you get to the end zone to be able to dance. You see the middle of the field absolutely opened up. Takes the bounce off the net. Just watch the middle of the field open up. That's where he's going to break to. Right down the middle. There's his lane. He knows where it is. Makes the break, gets that last block. Nobody there to touch him. Michael Baker, touchdown maker. Whalahan on for the extra point, up and good. So just like that, in a matter of a little over 30 <laughs> seconds, back-to-back -back touchdowns, a 57-yard return for Michael Baker. He had 191 yards receiving against Memphis in May. Obviously, he can do it as a receiver, and he can do it Endo game, which is coming up at 12.30 Eastern time on ESPN2. We're showing the score now. 
Iowa and Connecticut. Iowa, an easy victory. Don't look if you're going to watch that Close your Orlando eyes. Close Anaheim your eyes. game. Albany a winner over Milwaukee, 54 to 49. As we continue, Tampa Bay a victory over Texas, and here's the surprise: Arizona struggling as of late, a 30 to 29 loss. This is why St. Louis San Jose. needs this game, and they'll play Arizona. They're getting a team that's down a little bit. Here is Pratt juggling as he comes up with the ball, and he's dragged down at the 15-yard line. Flag. What is the right width? Well, welcome back to St. Louis. A 7-7 tie as we begin play in the second quarter. James Gidry, the quarterback for the Bobcats. Could have been a whole different season for him at all as Pratt takes it on the sweep. Look out, acceleration, and he gets pinned to the boards. A flag is down as he takes it inside the five to the three. Play action fake. It's Hoker, it's on the screen, down the sidelines. And Darrell Hammond, the defensive back, was sealed off on the play. Pratt, he may throw to the end zone, touchdown. Tony Wells on the reception. That is Pratt's second touchdown through the air. He may want some time at quarterback. Well, I say, pull up, thinking he's gonna run. All the DBs are going, uh-oh. They're still saying uh-oh, but for a different <laughs> reason. Uh, the extra point by Vita Tech is up and good. The Arena Football on ESPN2 is brought to you by Paramount Pictures Escape from L.A. It starts Friday, August the 9th at theaters everywhere, rated R. And by Firestone, America's tire since 1900. <laughs> 14 7 Florida leading St. Louis. As you see how dangerous Cleveland Pratt can be, he's figured in both touchdowns for the Bobcats. One on a 36-yard reception, one throwing a 14-yard touchdown pass as Florida boots it away. And that doesn't touch. Comes in motion to the near side. Paleo has got him again, and that'll be a first down. Beyond, as Baker has been the focus of the offense here, he'll take it on the pitch this time. And a nice defensive play. He does not have even a single TD pass in this game. As he fires over the middle, that is complete to Darrell Hammond, and another first down. Paleo with a short drop to the end zone. Hammond incomplete as they both go sailing Look right at, over the wall. And he's holding his hand up. He caught the ball, but he was out of bounds when he caught it. What a great job hanging on to the ball. You ought to get styled. Look at this. Both hands going up, extending out for the ball. Nice throw. If he could have just got that foot down, came down out of bounds. He did catch the ball, but sure he and did. Darius Hadley both went flying over the Here wall. the ball. <laughs> he holds the ball up. If he could have just got that foot down. Put it down at the 17-yard line with the 8-yard end zone. Oh. That'll be a 25-yard kick, which he misses. That's now a live ball, and it's loose. And Florida will take over. But there the net comes into play. Just been destroyed by injuries as Pratt takes the handoff. Gidry falling down three as the Bobcats look to add to their lead. Here's Gidry. And that is batted down at the line of scrimmage. Nice play by Chuck Hyphon. First and goal from the five. The handoff to Simpson leaping to the end zone. I believe he was down at about the six inch mark. And he'll make it this time. Dante Simpson, the workhorse on this drive emerging in a big way in arena football as this is the first time he's had it he's got it and so the bobcats with 18 seconds to go before halftime extend their lead out to 14 points 20 31 yard kick blocked the ball still loose and that will do it the end of the first half so Florida comes up with the big plays offensively and then defensively just before halftime and they've got a 21 7 lead a nice block on it let's get you caught up on the day in the sports world starting with baseball the Colorado Rockies what a long well, welcome back to the Keel Center in St. Louis where Florida surprisingly leads the St. Louis Stampede 21 to 7 the an obstacle in their way as we take a look at the first half stats in St. Louis as you see 8 of 17 in the air for only 80 yards well below what John Kaleo is capable of putting up first downs even 
and rushing yards. That's maybe the biggest surprise of all because Bernard Hall and St. Louis, that's right. a team known for the running game. As we start the third quarter, it's Baker fielding the kickoff and drops at the three-yard line. Stampede at their own 16-yard line. That's Baker in motion. Kaleo wants him. He's got him. Fighting off tacklers. Driving his way down to the 22-yard line of the bot for the stampede. They'll run Bernard Hall on the pitch as he careens around the corner, and a flag is down in the backfield. John Kaleo. Deep down the field for Hall. Got it. And into the end zone. Touchdown. Darius Hadley fell down on the play. Up top, Matt Hall, long and lanky, takes it into the end zone. St. Louis, down by a touch. Tonight's presentation of Arena Football on ESPN2 is brought to you by Pep Boys. 26,000 items at the guaranteed low price. Tires and service too, everything but gas. And by Sitco, just get up and go. Sitco says go. Back in St. Louis, there's Matt Hall bringing the stampede to within a touchdown at 21-14. Still lots of time left, and that's the beauty of arena football. You may not have a lot going in terms of momentum, but you can strike so quickly. That is off the goal post. And the lower numbers, the running numbers. Second and five. Kidry, good protection, pump fake. Oh, wide open is Millard Hamilton. Touchdown, Florida. Hiawatha Pfeiffer got burned bad. On that play, great protection. Hamilton went streaking down the sideline. Wow, he bit hard. He just faked the out. Didn't really cut on the out, just a little turn, but enough for Hiawatha to make that move toward him. Absolutely wide open. Hamilton is a track star in college at Clark. Specialized in the long jump and the 100 meters. As Vitek drills the extra point, as we'll take one more look at the touchdown, the Bobcats extending their lead again out to two touchdowns at 28 to 14. You look how quick it can happen just when St. Louis thinks they're coming back. There's Florida hitting the deep ball, scoring, making a 28-14 Bobcat lead. Even on this team a month ago. Absolutely, only been here about 13 days, but looked a little shaky in the beginning. Now looking very comfortable. Baker goes up high at the back of the end zone to field it, breaks free, and now gets dragged down by an ankle. Here. If you like this one, join us at 12.30 a.m. Eastern time on ESPN for Anaheim and Orlando. This is an exciting game that went down to the wire and then some. Tonight, Anaheim and Orlando on ESPN. There, you want to make a little bet on the outcome? Well, since the game was taped last night, I have a feeling Ow. that... Uh, okay, you knew, huh? <laughs> Not sure I want to wager with you on that one. There's a strike to Darrell Hammond at the 20-yard line. He's been kind of quiet tonight. For a lot of time, they probably want to try to punch it into the end zone. Wide open is Hayes, the 10-5. Touchdown. Had to be a mix-up in coverage because he split the seam. He did. Tony Wells, number one. Watch, he's going to come over him too late. Going to come into your picture too late. He's got to get over there with the motion a little quicker. Yeah, they never got a hand on him until he got inside the five-yard line. Whale a hand for the extra point. Oh, no good. So that could be trouble. That could be trouble down the stretch. They run the cross, and Hayes takes it into the end zone. The stampede down 28-20. The stampede. Here's the kick. Off the net. Pratt has got it. Up the middle. Look out. He's going to go and finally gets dragged down at the 10. I think he had a touchdown. He thought he had a touchdown. Ran into his own teammate. Oh, let me tell you what. Shane Garrett is going to get credit for that tackle. Unfortunately, that's Cleveland Pratt's teammate. Four. First and 10 for Gidry in the box. Oh, intercepted. Picked off by Chuck Ifon. Talk about a momentum change. 
Second and two for Kaleo. It's a screen complete. And that is Hython, who thinks he's a hurdler. Down to the 15-yard line. Garrett on the tackle. A little bit of tempers going on now. Hython, who jumped, who jumped to get that interception. Second and goal. St. Louis. Trying to eat up that eight-point deficit. Kaleo fires. Touchdown. Michael Baker. Hello, Michael. <laughs> Uh-oh, don't they do that in Green Bay with the Packers going up into the stands like that? Michael Baker doing a little dance again. Oh, with a fan. Coming in motion. Again, you're not seeing a defensive back anywhere. And you're that close to the goal line. Brady Ross has got to be up tighter as he was in the interference call. He was up there tight enough. He's got to be there tighter. And then Michael Baker saying hello to the fan. Now, Whalahan missed the extra point earlier, so they're going to go for two here now. Two-point play to try to tie the game. Ball spotted on the three. Kaleo. All day to throw. Flags down into the end zone. And it's caught there by Florida. That is going to be. So they'll take another crack. Touchdown over the top. It's Hython. Deservedly so. Hython gets it. He gets the interception. The nice run hurling over Porter. And we are tied at 28. Larry Beal along with Mike Golick, and this has turned into a tight one. Florida controlled the first half as they erupted for two touchdowns in the second quarter, and they had that 14-point lead at the half, but here comes St. Louis with 21 points in the third period to knot it up at 28. Do you think, do you think Dave Eward had uh, something to say in the halftime that had something to do with those points? Whatever he said, it worked. And we've got movement up front, content to settle for a field goal. They want a touchdown. A presentation of Arena Football on ESPN2 has been brought to you by Mikeaton to stop the itch and cool the burn of athletes' foot. Use Mikeaton. And by MBNA America, proud issuer of the Arena Football League visa. Fourth and goal at the Keel Center in St. Louis. Florida trying to snap the 28-28 tie, but it is getting loud in this building. Hamilton in motion. Gidry to pass. Papa Sadero wraps him up. And a huge sack. Bernard Hall picking out the ball, but they're going to 17. Kaleo on the sideline pattern. Flag down immediately. Hits the goal post. And that is zone loose ball and I say it is not a fumble he was in the act of throwing it with his own 61 yards and it'll be well short the five the ten and dropped at the 15 yard line is Car Kaleo has got his man Barber as he crosses from left to right, all the way across the field, down at the 20-yard line. A great passing game, but here the screen to Hall. One-handed grab as he juggled down the sideline. Fans want a touchdown, but he was knocked out of bounds. Although he tries to squeeze into the corner of the end zone here, and he is just all over the top. Touchdown. There he is with number 30 and a little dance to go along with it. And the Stampede have got a handful of the extra points. Got it. 35-28. The Stampede erasing the deficit and surging ahead of the Florida Bobcats. 6.07 to play. Here's Pratt in motion. They need a big play out of him right now. As Gidry under pressure again. Look out, eludes. Three rushers, then throws back across the field to Garrett. Gets a block of a 15, 10. Five-yard line, knocked out of bounds. Man, talk about individual effort. First by Gidry to do the Houdini. And third and goal for the Bobcats. The draw to Jones. Can he get outside? No. Stopped by Hyphon. You know, we talked about Michael Baker you're looking at. Running play. Surprise. Touchdown. 
My goodness, who would think that a running play on fourth down would get the job done? I'm sure saying, boy, didn't even need him. Great job of blocking on the outside to keep the corner open. Great call, Jim Jensen. Sure was. Absolutely, St. Louis was expecting that. Now, they're down by a point still. 35-34. You're going for two, I presume, because you, you, you've got nothing to lose. Your season's over regardless. Might as well go for the win. And we'll hear what Kid recalls. Exact same, same play. play. Exact same. Now, I don't know about this. I mean, uh, St. Louis might be ready for this. I might be formation to run the sweep right. Two-point play to take the lead. Here's Pratt. Blockers in front. Throws it. Touchdown. But wait to Tony Wells. Flag is down. Are they going to call lineman downfield? Did he throw that or he did he threw shot it? put that thing? It really looked like he's running. Look, he just shot puts it. I mean, that wasn't even a, I don't know what well, to call it. it look, at, look at the man in the end zone, Claude Jones. Celebrating in the right. end zone. Well, he was in the is, end zone. Line of scrimmage was the three, so he's an illegal man downfield. He was trying to throw a block, but the refs made a good call there. Two-point try to take the lead. Gidry lobs to the end zone. Touchdown! Actually, two-point play, not a touchdown, but wow. flags fly everywhere. As Wells makes the catch, and I think they're going to get pass interference call. Yeah, I think they are. The flares were the two receivers that went to the right of the end zone, taking the defensive backs with them. Then Wells drags across the back of the end zone. Nice throw. He lobbed it up over the defenders. Play will stand. Pass interference against St. Louis. A good play again, Gidry. On their initial attempt at two, they get the two-point play. And now 35 seconds, 35 seconds left. High end over end, taken by Baker in the back of the end zone. Out to the 14-yard line. It's funny, the official West Frick down one with 32 seconds left. Kaleo, short drop, complete to Baker. Oh, look out. He was off and running, but he stepped out of bounds at the 10. And this quick toss on the hitch pattern to Baker, and he is leveled by Allen, number 91, at the 16 yard. Ball to do a quick stop. Third and two, Kaleo. Three step drop complete to Baker, who takes Time. it out to the 24 yard line. No, 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 no. 16 seconds left. Kaleo with a pump fake, looking downfield, and he just throws it away. Well, that's a smart play because you don't want left. Hammond in motion. Kaleo. Has got him. Down he goes. Four seconds left, and they call timeout. Ona next week. They're in the playoffs regardless. This kick decides where they go. Whalahan. No good. Into the crowd. And that is it. James Gidry in celebration. Everybody, Chris, I love you. Yeah! Yeah. That's a great way for the Florida Bobcats to end their season. They got to be extremely happy. You saw Michael Baker just absolutely disgusted afterward. I think he probably would have liked to gone for the touchdown instead of the field goal. Here's the kick. Not a lot of pressure. Just pulled it. Whalahan. And here's the reaction from Dave Ewards. Oh, boy. Yeah, we talked to Dave Ewert before, and he was happy they were in the playoffs, and he was happy about that, but absolutely, you'd rather go into the playoffs with a win. So Florida wins a thriller, 36-35, to 35 in the final game of the regular season for them. Next week, be sure to join us next Saturday night at midnight Eastern time on ESPN2. It's Orlando going into the desert to take on Arizona. And on Monday on ESPN, these very same stampede from St. Louis go to Iowa in the barn, trying to win it there Monday, August the 12th, midnight Eastern time. Coming up next on ESPN2, the Sports Smash with Rich Eisen. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Mike Goley, I'm Larry Beal. Good night, everybody. All right, Larry, thanks. Rich Eisen back in the Deuce Studios, and I am still overdressed. Let's get you caught up on the other game in arena football, the Minnesota 
Fighting Pike and the Memphis Pharaohs sounds like a twisted Passover story, but actually the score is the Fighting Pike biting Memphis by the score of 30 to 9, and that's your halftime score in that arena football contest. Drag racing is next, by the way. I don't know if I mentioned that to you. I was so caught up on what I was wearing. The Dream Team looked...